love it. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing that I come across is the word holistic health. I feel like in people can attach whatever ideas they want to it, but really what it is, is like you said, you're combining the mind and the body and not just isolating each, but working them together as one in a sense. And I think that's a big piece that can completely shift anybody's life is once we stop isolating every single part and actually work everything together as an integrated system, that's where I think people are going to see phenomenal changes. And I remember in our last conversation, you know, you said someone could have a, you know, a groin injury, but the groin is just the symptom that may not actually be the issue. So I'd love to kind of just have you dive into some ways that people can prevent injury that are playing, Mm -hmm. you know, sports or athletics at high level. You mentioned powerlifting, any way that people can help to prevent injury and not get so honed in on the one symptom that's being caused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think I would, I would preface this for anyone watching that if you run, jump, sprint, throw, rotate your body, change direction really quickly, lift heavy weights off the ground. Technically you are doing athletic skills by virtue of that. You are representing ideas or, or even doing things that athletes do. So when people say, I'm not an athlete, I just do this for fun. It's a bit of a cash 22 because you are doing the athletic thing. Right. So whatever the athlete actually needs, you do need. So when you're watching this person do like all this intensive training, you do need some semblance of that. Maybe find the 20% of what's effective that's going to be 80 percent effective the rest of your life yes Pareto's principle 100 percent. i agree but there has to be that understanding that just because you're not identifying as an athlete you are identifying with the skill and by virtue of that you're doing something athletic so you have to take that into consideration number one that's that's the practice now once we have that practice in place with injuries I was having a discussion with somebody downstairs just a second ago. I was starting to see, man, that the nervous system has more to do with how, how well you can prevent an injury than anything else. So mm-hmm. if someone is so mind identified and is stressed out all the time and is, and by virtue of that, it's not taking care of their body because it, it starts here. If your paradigm is, it's like, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm going to attach to this stressful scenario over and over and over and over. I kid you not, man, every person that walks into our gym like that, I can already see your calves are going to be tight. Your mid back's going to be tight. Your lats are going to be tight. And not necessarily because of all the, the athletics you're playing. It's because your nervous system is so upregulated anyway that your muscles are going to be so tight and so rigid, but not strong. They're just tight by virtue of you being upregulated. And if you're starting there, then you're playing your sport, which requires more upregulation. Imagine what that's doing to your tissues, your tendons, your ligaments, and your fascia, and making them tighter and tighter and tighter. You don't have the awareness to spread the load and force through your entire body. You're overusing the things that you're just stressed out about. So if your traps are your manifestation of stress, that's what you're going to use when you throw a ball. Right. If you are, if your cats are your manifestation of you being pissed off at someone that cuts you off on the road, that's what's going to happen when you're jumping. You're going to tear your Achilles. So it's a lot of factors, but I'll say the big revelation that just came through literally an hour ago before I hopped on this call. We're like, man, I think the mind has more, the paradigm has more to do with anything before we even talk about nutrition. But we talk about movement or mobility and strength and conditioning and all that. We, we'll, we can get into that, but I want to start with that because that is the thing. And I would be, I'd be remiss to say that it's, it's, it's just mobility because it's not, right. you know, it's, and I was just having a discussion with someone else. I'm like, look, I don't feel comfortable putting you into a movement because right now I can't even, I just touch you like this and you're, you're flinching in pain. Right. And this person's like, but, but how long will it take? Like, Dude, this is what your body's presenting with. So the shift, so the shift of, Instead of asking yourself how long it's going to take, it's it's sitting with it and observe, just observing. Okay, this is tense. Sit with it. How long has it been tense for? 
don't know, maybe the past two years, I've been thinking about this one thing for so long. What are my associated thoughts with this tension? Oh, these 10 things. What does that make me feel like? Oh, my stomach feels tight. Okay. What is that related to? Do you feel like you're always constipated because of that? Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Is that why you can't turn on your abs? Oh, interesting. And you build this conversation with your body. And now when your coach is talking to you and saying, hey, what do you feel? You have the blueprint of yourself. Oh, yeah, I can't feel my abs here. And I think I know why. I can't feel my glutes here. I know why. And we are good at assuming because we figured it out. But man, I'm learning that if someone is going to buy into what we do, they got to buy into themselves.